Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Son held after U.S. mother stopped to death in St. Andrew. A 55-year-old U.S. resident was stopped to death and her 34-year-old son taken into police custody following an incident on Wolverine Avenue, St. Andrew on Monday morning. The dead woman has been identified as Marvel Johnson from Northwest 38th Street in Florida. Reporters understand that a knife believed to be the murder weapon has been seized by the authorities. The suspect is said to be a mason from Red Hills Road. It was reported that around 7.20 a.m., Johnson, who returned to the island recently from the United States, went to Wolfen Avenue to look for relatives and treat her son. While the now deceased was inside one of the bedrooms, it is alleged that she was attacked with a knife and stabbed multiple times all over her body. Relatives who reported they heard her crying for help went to her assistance and pulled the suspect away before calling the police. Johnson was assisted to the Kingston Public Hospital where she was pronounced dead while undergoing treatment. The son was detained following the incident. Man's partially decomposed body found in Salt River The decomposing body of a man was found in Salt River Clarendon Tuesday morning. Police said the body is believed to be that of Merrick Aries, a 43-year-old resident of 46 Terrace in Kingston. According to the police, the partially decomposed body was discovered in bushes in Salt River about 9.30 a.m. The body had what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the head and upper body. The police said that they were summoned to the location by residents who made the gruesome discovery. Upon the cops' arrival, the body was seen on its back, clad in a white t-shirt, white underpants, blue jeans, and white sneakers. The deceased's pants was half done and his belt undone. A grey Honda motor vehicle was parked beside the body. Checks revealed that the car is a property of a car rental company with branches in Kingston, St. Anne and St. James. The police said items were found in the car that could assist them with their investigation. Preliminary investigations have revealed that the vehicle was rented in St. James last Saturday and was supposed to be returned on October 30. Based on their assessment of the scene, the police theorized that Merck had been lured to the area and was robbed of his belongings. Driver gets 1 million bill in fatal Clarendon hit and run of 5-year-old boy. Clarendon resident 33-year-old William Bell was on Friday offered 1 million bill in relation to a hit and run that resulted in the death of a 5-year-old boy. Bell, who is charged with causing death by dangerous driving, is to reappear in this parish court at Lionel Town on Monday, December 4. Bell, who is from Bunkers Hill, was charged after he turned himself into police on Tuesday, October 17. The incident happened on the afternoon of Wednesday, October 11. It is reported that about 3.30 p.m., five-year-old Demari Starvey of Bunkers Hill in Flankers was walking along a roadway with his mother when he was hit by a Toyota Probox motor car that Bell was driving. After the accident, Bell fled the scene. The child was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Man to pay $50,000 for hitting dad in head with hammer. A man who hit his father in the head with a hammer has been sentenced to probation and ordered to pay $50,000 in restitution after pleading guilty to unlawful wounding. A trial has been scheduled to begin on Monday, but Troy Jarrett, who had previously pleaded not guilty, changed his plea. On previous mentioned dates, tension between the father and the son played out in court, though the complainant stated, that this was the first time he was being hit by his son. Despite the father's strong insistence on having his son imprisoned, the court determined that it was crucial to explore alternative solutions that prioritized the well-being of both parties involved and the peer was sent to mediation. However, the mediation sessions became challenging as they were unable to reach an agreement and the father remained resolute in his decision to pursue a trial in order to seek justice. As a result, the matter was set for a trial. After pleading guilty before presiding judge Sasha Marie Simit Asher on Monday, Jarrett was sentenced to two years probation and ordered him to pay $50,000 in restitution. According to the prosecution's case file, on March 22, the complainant visited his daughter's house in Cornwall Courts where he and his son got into an argument. During the dispute, Jarrett took a hammer belonging to his father and struck him in the head, causing a wound. Grange working to Ed Reef between Rugby Girls and GFF Expressing her concern about the ongoing rift between the senior reggae girls and the Jamaica Football Federation, JFF, Minister of Sport Oliver Grange 
say she is working towards mending the relationship between both parties. As Minister, I have been careful not to say or do anything that could be seen as political interference in Jamaica's football program. However, like any other fan, I have been concerned about the relationship between the Jamaica Football Federation and members of the Record Girls squad, Green said in a statement on Monday. None of the players who played for Jamaica at their summer FIFA Women's World Cup and the Paris Olympic qualifiers in September are part of the squad for the upcoming CONCACAF World Cup qualifying match against Panama and Guatemala, having turned down selection to the team in a move, they said, to the end of the cycle of mistreatment from the JFF, which allegedly includes not being paid in full for their participation at the World Cup and qualification for the tournament. While this has been the hardest decision we had to make, we feel it is necessary. We have just yet to receive full and correct payments for our historical performances at the World Cup and the numerous outstanding bonuses for qualifying in the summer 2022. We have dealt with delays, delay in payment from the JFF time and time again, the girl said in a statement. In response, the JFF suspended the player indefinitely, saying in a statement that it was uncomfortable with the response of the players and the non-attendance of the player representatives to the scheduled meeting. However, the Federation said it is eager to clear up all concerns from the players. Grinch noted that meanwhile, she has been in dialogue with both sides in an attempt to bring them together and will continue to do my utmost to facilitate an amicable resolution in the interest of Jamaica. The new look reggae girl squad will have a training session in Panama City on Tuesday ahead of Wednesday's game against Panama as they seek to qualify for the first ever Cocoa of Women's World Cup set for February 20 to March 10 next year in the United States. Following the Panama game, the delegation will fly to Jamaica, where they will host Guatemala on Saturday. Only the winner of the three-team group will advance to the Gold Cup. Alleged car thieves remanded. Four men accused of stealing a man's car while he was having lunch were remanded in the St. Catherine Parish Court. Parish Court Judge Yvette Wilbert Miller told the defense attorneys that applications for bail couldn't be entertained for Romain Crossdale, Stephen Fullwood, Dwayne Modi, and Andre Carter, who are jointly charged with larceny of a vehicle. The matter was pushed back to Friday when the bail applications are expected to be heard. Allegations are that on October 6, the complainant parked his Toyota Probox motor car at the East Side Plaza in Old Harbor, St. Catherine, and went to have lunch. Upon return, he discovered his vehicle was missing. A report was made to the Old Harbor Police and an investigation was launched. The stolen vehicle was recovered in Golden Grove, St. Anne, and the four men were subsequently arrested and charged with larceny. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the